Hey guys. Okay. I am live. Let's see. What is this new managing? Okay. Sorry. I'm like looking at all of the, <laughs> all of the little things popping up all over the place. Make sure that my volume is up. Okay. So I am on here. You guys, I'm going to wait to a couple more people to show up, see if we can get some questions rolling in. Um, I'm going to do like another, I have like a, a, a work, a late work night. So I thought I've been trying to do this recently and just do some live Q and A's while I'm working late at night. I can kind of like multitask because I see you guys leaving a lot of comments on past videos and some, I think I still need to go back and answer quite a few. I've been super busy, but I figured that I can come do some Q and A and ask some questions. Um, and if you guys were in the Facebook group, on the other day, you know, we went through so many different questions um, on how to launch a six-figure cleaning company. I think we answered like, I think we was on there for like an hour and a half, but it was so many good questions. It was like, I couldn't, I couldn't find the point when to stop it, <laughs> um, when to stop it because there's so many good questions coming on. And I see there's some people rolling in. You guys, um, we are doing like a live q and I'm doing like a little work night and I figure that I will come on here and answer some questions. So if y'all have any questions about um, how to start a six-figure cleaning company, residential company, um, you know, I am your girl. Please drop your guys' questions in the chat, whether you are wanting to start one or you never, you kind of thought about starting one, or even if you are a cleaner. I've been trying to really get a lot of my solo cleaners out of the field, like, you know, build the business. You cannot, you can only grow as far as you can go, right? Like literally um, when you are actually operating and doing the cleaning yourself. So if you are stuck in that position, it is really time for you to get out there and build. So for the viewers that are popping in right now, let me know, do you guys currently have a cleaning company? Are you thinking about starting one? Have you always wanted to start one? You wasn't for sure if you had enough funds to do so like let me know in the chat like who i'm talking to this evening and then i kind of know you know how we could um have our questions and gear our conversation because you know i don't want to talk about brand new launching if we have some people in here that's like trying to scale and you're like yo jazz like i've had a cleaning company for a year but i'm stuck at 5k and i'm trying to hire cleaners and i'm constantly like you know my turnover rate is high where you guys are currently at in your process? Or do we have people that's like, I always wanted it to open one, but just not sure if, it, if I'm capable of doing so. Um, and let me tell you, there's so many successful students in the CO Clean Academy of people that have never, ever, like ever had um, a cleaning business whatsoever. Um, and I feel like, well, first of all, I feel like if I can do it, anybody can do it off top. Like I just did not have any experience um, in like besides cleaning my own house, right? Um, now, of course, there's so many different strategies. Like the strategies and the systems in place allow your business to grow much more smoothly um, and allows it to really grow like on a good solid foundation. Um, but just learning how, like the main things about the cleaning business, right? Like the main things is finding cleaning, finding cleaners and finding clients, right? Those are like the two main things that I always tell people to focus on First, finding cleaners, finding clients, having all the strategies, having all of the, the systems in place. Those are those are good. But I, I'm currently working with a cleaning business owner right now, um, one on one. And we're going to we're kind of like having to reconstruct her whole business. Um, she's been in business for maybe three to four years already. She has great clients. She averages about 60 bookings a month, right? Which is awesome. But her profitability is very low because of how she set it up. So, you know, that that's when it's like, okay, I, I do need strategies and you do need to implement some good things with setting up your business. Um, but the main things is cleaners and clients. And that's what she has, right? <laughs> she has, she definitely have the clients and she definitely has the cleaners, but we just need to like go in there and fix some things up. Um, but anybody can literally start this cleaning business without any knowledge whatsoever. Um, and I think that's the best part that I love about this business because it doesn't take a rocket science. It just takes somebody literally willing to learn and to do the things. Um, 
sometimes people are not as consistent in learning the things and doing the business or like they'll have a rough patch or, you know, it may not go as, as, as they want it. They didn't hit the 10 K like their first month and they're like, they're out, but this business um, is phenomenal. And the growth that you can see is, is like limitless. And I think that's the main thing that I really, really love about it. Let's see. I see Erica answer, ask a question. I have everything set up when it comes to legal documents, only difference from what you teach when I'm trying to do is that I want to get into the hands on hands on cleaning with my partners because I have a nine to five. Wait, so is that I want to get into hand? So you want to do the cleanings? Are you is that what you're saying? Like you want to actually be out there doing the cleanings as well? Oh, you want to quit. So you want to quit your nine to five so you can be out there in the fields doing the cleanings. Is that right? And you know, like, yes. So now if you're out there doing the cleanings, who is communicating to the leads? Who Who's doing the marketing and talking to new clients and like answering calls for new clients? Are you hiring a VA to do that part? Let me know. And does anybody else feel that way? Does anybody else want to actually be out in the fields doing the cleanings? And then if you do, may I ask why? Is it a trust issue to where you're not sure if your cleaners are going to be able to do a good enough job? And then you need to have a really good hiring system put in place to where you're making sure to hire the right cleaners. Um, you know, back to that, the reference of a company I was talking about, you know, she has about 60 bookings a month and maybe 75% of those bookings are reoccurring, which is awesome. Right. But, um, she's been currently losing some of her reoccurring clients due to the cleaners, right. Due to cleaners, not doing a really good job, being late, no shows, um, not, professional, right? Um, and like she gives them chance after chance after chance. And I don't know if you guys, anybody's on here that's like watched any of my videos before, but I am such a strong stickler on, look, hire fast. I'm sorry, hire slow, fire fast. I will give grace and I understand life scenarios, right? Like y'all may see Jay Savory pop in this video like two times before I in this Q&A, right? So I get like the unpredictability of family and trying to juggle and do all the things. But if I keep allowing people to not show up in my business like I need them to, then they're literally taking food out of my kid's mouth, right? They're taking money away from my household. So that's why I have that philosophy of hire slow, fire fast. So when you are hiring the right cleaners and they have the experience, and they know and they have all of that knowledge, then they're going to be able to show up just or maybe as good as you are. And if you need somebody to be implemented and put in place as like a lead, then you can hire for that, right? If you need that. I was going to do that one time before, um, but I just didn't really see that. I like I really just needed her to clean. <laughs> She's a really good cleaner. I just needed her to clean. I didn't want her to waste time, like to be going to overlook and do Q&A um, quality assurance, like on other cleans, you know? So can I ask why you would like to clean? Okay, let me know that. Do we have any other questions? Any other questions on cleaning business? Please drop them. I do plan on doing everything myself at first with the help of my partner when I plan to add cleaners as the business grows. I just want to see myself being able to focus on clients and cleaners with a nine to five. I just can't. Oh, I just can't see myself. Okay. So I have, I have seen, um, I have friends that have been able to build a very good, successful six figure cleaning company and beyond with working a nine to five. So you totally can still build a company and have a full time job. 
Now, are there going to be some challenges? Yes. Will you have to do some workarounds? Yes. Right. The, the hardest part will probably be with responding to leads. OK, your cleaners, you're fine. Like you could communicate with them on the slide, especially if you have a partner, you guys can work out your schedule to see who can communicate at what time, who's available to accept calls at what time. The hardest part, depending on where your leads are coming from, Google leads tend to call, right? Um, like your phone will be off the hook if you have Google leads. Um, Thumbtack leads tend to message like directly on the Thumbtack app. Um, Bark leads, you'll end up texting or emailing those. Yelp leads also is on the app if they respond back. Um, and then sometimes you'll get some Yelp leads that will call. But um, so it just depends on that part, right? So if you can be on the sly and like texting leads as they come in, um, Thumbtack now has like automatic, um, they have like some automatic text response to leads that you can, that you can set up. Um, and then also you can put like pre-saved messages on there to where like it's just a click of a button so the moment a lead comes through right because the, the biggest thing about leads coming through is your response time so that'll be like where you'll have your hurdle to determine how hard it would be but i do know it's possible and i and not even possible i know it's doable because i've seen friends have nine to fives and grow to a multiple six-figure cleaning company. So it is doable, just a little challenging. And the thing about it is like, once you are able to um, build enough income, then that's when you wanna put a VA in place. So that way they can take the calls mm -hmm. and you're not having to. And then you're just able to manage your cleaners and then you know talk and provide assistance to the VA as needed, but then you're not having to worry about missing out on leads. What is the phone app you talked about that both phones can ring when someone open phone? Open phone is the app that I like to use. I put it on my phone, um, which is awesome. Like I, I use this. I'm let me go find the link because I have a code and you'll they'll give you a $20 credit, which is awesome because it basically you get your first month for free. Um let me find that while I'm talking. Um, but yes, it's 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 a really great phone system. Like I said, I use this one phone system to run my entire VA company. And we have lots of companies and VAs and all these phones. And I can manage all of them with it. Um, where like the phone will literally ring on your phone and then whoever else is on your team. So like your partner can be on there. Um, your VA, you can be on there. Hire your mama, your best friend, your cousin, your auntie, somebody to answer the phone. Like you guys can literally all be on there and it'll all ring on all the devices at the same time. And then the person can answer. And then so when the phone rings, you'll be able to like easily distinctively know if it's like a regular call versus a business call. So and then you can text from that line as well. So it's like it's it's, it's one of my favorites and it's um, really good price as well. Um, you are welcome. Yeah. So let's say that's going to be the hardest thing, but I know it's doable because I've seen people being able to manage both. Um, it's like, once you get in a good rhythm, you have your systems put in place, you've done your hiring, um, you have your clients, right? The day to day is pretty easy. Like if you have all of that put in place, right? The only thing that's going to take a lot of attention is just responding to leads. Otherwise, like it's not gonna like that's the beauty about this business. It doesn't require you to be like locked in and working on your laptop and doing all the things all the time. Like, no, you set your business up, you set all your legions platforms up, you set your bank account, your stripe, your your booking platform, your website. Like you do all of that foundation piece in the beginning. So that will require a lot of time uh, with setting it up and putting all the motions, putting all the things in motion and learning the business. But after you put in that work, like the, the maintain part is just being able to respond to leads. Like, that's it. Like, that's it. And now, of course, you know, the more you grow, the more you have challenges. Mondays, we run payroll. So Mondays for our, for, it's kind of crazy because like, we're like going over everything and making sure that payroll is done. So that way everybody has that direct deposit on Friday. But once you get into the rhythm of things, it is it's smooth selling. And especially when you get a VA put in place, you don't have to even worry about like that day to day. And it's so funny. I was talking to one of our VA clients this uh, evening 
And she was like, I'm having such a hard time, like delegating. I want to do all the things. And she's, I'm like, well, what all do you have to do? Like in, in your day, like, give me your day process. Like everything you do from the moment you start your day to the end that you start your day. And she's just listing out all of these things and they're very minute, right? But sometimes we have the tendency of like turning, like, I don't know, I don't know which one is bigger. I Turning an ant hill into a molehill. Is that the right one? Right. And I was like, girl, like, let me, let me talk these back to you. You're telling me that you need to hire and find cleaners, that you're looking to implement a new HR platform and that you need to contact old clients because one of your cleaners left. Um, so that's three things. That's not that bad. Right. But when we're in it and we're dealing with the stress or the frustrations of it and like it can just seem so overwhelming. But like when we step back and look at it, she was like, well, I guess you're right. And I'm like, and four out of those things like your VA can do for you. So you're not you don't even need to do that. And her problem was that she was just having a hard time letting go and and giving that trust over to the VA to do those things, right? Which is understandable because when you build your business, it becomes your baby, right? You invest all this time and money and effort and energy. You don't want it to fail. And you kind of feel like no one is going to take care of your baby like I can or like you can, right? And nobody's going to answer the calls like I can. Nobody's going to push the calls like I can. No one's going to work as hard as I can, right? It's so hard not to become, oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> I am I am a total control freak. Um, and like the moment I learned that I can't control anything is like the moment I really got freedom from it um, because I, I really can't. Like I try so hard to control every aspect of my business and things still go wrong. Okay. <laughs> We're having a challenge on next week. You guys, I pushed this date back for this challenge three times. The date was supposed to be the weekend after the conference. And I got really, really sick and I was out for three weeks. And, I, and I, each day I try to come back to work and like, I just couldn't. And then like I had link issues and internet issues. And I was like, you know what? I'm setting this date and nothing's going to change it. And guess what? <laughs> I'm still having like internet issues. Like I, the issues have not stopped, but my actions don't, right? That Like that's the only thing I can control, right? I have to learn what I have, what like actually, like what I really, really have control over, right? And I can just control just that. Um, and it's the same thing in your business. If you implement the right systems, what you can control is you're hiring. Who am I hiring? What am I looking for? What I can control is my marketing, right? Who am I marketing to? Where am I investing my dollars at? What, um, you know, am I putting my money in the right space, right? Because I had, you know, I was talking to somebody and it was like, I moved my leads 20 minutes further in, like, and, and I ha had messaged him. I was like, man, your volume has dropped tremendously. Like, what changed? Because I, I don't see the change, but what changed? And he was like, well, I I closed in our, our radius of service um, to try to like hit a certain area. And I don't know, like I just made that change, but I didn't know it was going to affect anything. And it affects so much. <laughs> like his business, like last month, like volume dropped maybe like 30% from him changing the area. And the initial area that he was servicing, I did research and like, no, this is the perfect area. This is where your market is going to be at. They're going to pay your prices. They're going to see your prices pop up and they're not going to hesitate. But the radius got changed and the volume dropped, right? So he tried to like over control a situation when like if he would have just allowed it to be what it was going to be and invest his money in the right area, then it was. So like we just have to learn what we can control. And you going out there to provide the cleaning service, that's 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 that wanting to have control over everything. And you're going to get out there and you're going to waste time. And I don't mean like waste time. I mean, waste time as in like your time can be spent doing something else that could add more profit to the business. You put the right people in place. You put the right cleaners in place. You find the right clients. It's your job. Like your position is meant to build the business and you can't build it 
by working in it because you can only grow as far as you can go. And you cleaning on your own or cleaning in general is going to max out your energy. You're not going to have enough energy to come and actually figure out how to grow the business, right? And that's the part where I was like, you can't grow it while being in it. So I understand that you want to be in it and, and actually do the workings. But I would recommend against it because I, it's not necessary in order to actually grow your company. Like you can grow um, your cleaning company very well without you having to meet any of your clients, without you having to meet any of your cleaners. Like literally, like you don't have to be face to face with nobody, not doing any walkthroughs, any of that. And your company can grow. I've seen it. People have done it. Um, so I'm telling you, it's, it's totally possible. How did you start on your own solo business cleaning? So I so I started solo, right? Uh, but um, I didn't stay solo very long, like whatsoever. But it's I teach, I do teach, and I try to encourage others not to start like I started, right? I started like I started out of it was like now i can say i started out of like lack of knowledge just not knowing right um but it was at that moment of time it was just out of necessity you know um i was in a very very bad financial situation my husband was um in another city trying to you know do truck driving i had just had my youngest son and we were just evicted cars repo i mean it was really bad i had to move in with my parents. Um, we lost everything. I mean, thank God my parents were here in Texas and, you know, they had a small apartment and my whole family of five moved into one bedroom. So it was out of necessity. It was like, yo, like what I have to do um, to bring in income to my family, because this is, you know, <laughs> I had to find a way to contribute to my household. And I was just praying. I remember like being in my mom's living room early, early in the morning before anybody woke up. And I was just crying and praying and just like upset with life. Like, man, like, why is this happening to me? Right. Like you be in those moments and just be like, why? That was the moment. <laughs> that was the moment that I was in. I just felt like my back was against the wall. And I like, I just did not understand why this was happening to me. Mm -hmm. And I was probably still full of hormones. I just had Jace Avery mm -hmm. and um, I was just going through it and just like, woe is me. And God just dropped that in my spirit about opening up a cleaning business. And it came out of nowhere. Cause I'm like, God, like I know how to clean my own house, but like, I never, I never even knew that people actually paid money to get their house clean. You're, like that's, that's never, I've never seen that before. Like, in my house and everybody's house that I know, they clean their own house. So I didn't even know like that was a real, real thing. I thought it was like just for like the rich and famous. But, you know, starting my business and like almost doing 10K my very first month, I was like, oh, yeah, people is definitely paying to get their house clean. And um, so I, I started out of that, right? I started out of that type of necessity to like hurry up and get my family out of that situation. But... I found out very quickly that I could only do too much. I mean, so much, like three to four houses a day. Oh my God, I was beat. Like I always smelled like Fabuloso <laughs> or some kind of cleaning supplies. I kept my, my towels in the trunk. I mean, it was, it was bad. Like I was so exhausted. It's so much work, which is why, I mean, I'm grateful for the experience, right? Because I appreciate my cleaners so, so much, which is why I'm super precedent about making sure that my prices are right. So that way I can pay them. So that way they feel seen, heard and respected and appreciated. That's how I can show them by paying them well, because I know that the work I know, like it's different for like you just cleaning your own house, right? You clean your own house, but like, oh, okay, I'm going to tackle this room. I'm going to tackle that room tomorrow. No, when you go do a house cleaning, your cleaners go out there to clean. They're cleaning top to bottom, a whole 3,000 square feet, five bedroom, two and a half bath house, the whole, the whole guap at one time, right? Baseboards, windowsills, door frames, light fixtures, dusting corners, like bedrooms, bathrooms, fridge. I mean, like all the things. So, I appreciate it because I, I know what they actually have to go through. But after like 
three to four months of me just burnt out and then having to take calls while at jobs. That's what it, that's what really set it off because I was missing more money while working. And I was in that space where like the money was coming in. I felt like I needed it all. Right. But then once I figured out that I, it's, it's volume based because I'm missing out clients. Oh, I'm so sorry. I won't be able to help you. I, I have somebody, my schedule is booked. I can, I can maybe do it, you know, on the, you know, on the ninth, if that works for you. No, I really needed it on the seventh, right? So I'm like, I was missing out money while trying to clean and my schedule was maxed out. Like I couldn't take any more. I can only grow as far as I can go. So that's when I was like, I need to hire somebody because somebody can do this with me. I can give them some money and also keep some money. And that, that was how it is. I hired my first cleaner, like that interview. I was super, super nervous. I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, hey, do you do you know how to clean? <laughs> do you have your own supplies? Like that that was literally like my interview. And I was like, I have a job on tomorrow. Are you are you available? And it was an older lady, or well, she was like older than me at the time. Um, so I was like, this this old lady, probably like this girl's tripping. <laughs> like, who she thinks she is? But I mean, she was one of my best cleaners, like she stayed with me heck along for like four years. So um but yeah, so you know, let's see. Um, so I I started off cleaning. If I would have known better, I wouldn't have, or I wouldn't have done it so long. Um, but I I teach for you guys not to, like, because you don't have to, right? If you want to know the experience of what it's like to solo clean, I just told you. You want some more horror stories and some of the nasty houses and people I had to put it with, I'll tell you. Okay, if you want to have some insight. There is no glory in like being like, oh, I'm about to go clean first so I can know. <laughs> no, I can show you how to build it without you actually out there in the field. Like my students are doing that and it's so amazing. And they have nine to fives. They have nine to fives and they built it up from um, without cleaning. Let me see. How many cleaners did you hire when you first let go of physical cleaning? So I hired one. And so it was me and her. And then I started enjoying me not cleaning. So then it was just her. And then I hired somebody else. Let me see. I think I think I had one for like, I think I had Crystal for like maybe a month until I hired my second one. And then once I hired my second one, then that person came with the team. And then they wanted to do solo jobs. So then I had three. And then I had three for a long time. And they was just killing it, doing two to three jobs a day, each person. So like I felt like at that moment, this is where I made my mistake, because I felt like at that moment, they was doing two to three jobs a day, like six days a week. Crystal was killing it, doing it seven days a week. Um, I felt like my business was maxing out so much. I was like, oh, this is perfect. Like, I'm cool, right? Like, I don't need, I, I, I just felt like that was it. Like, my business was going to be good from there. I didn't need to hire no more. I didn't need to, like, do anything else to build my business until that, that team that was solo and team, until they moved. They moved out of state, and I was just back with Crystal. And um, I, I refused to go back in to clean because I felt like if I went back in, I would get too comfortable cleaning. Um, so then that forced me to like really, really hire. And then I, from then, I always like my minimum was always have a minimum of eight cleaners currently on staff at all times. So that way, if one got sick, one moved, one hurt, whatever car like that, because I've been in two positions, either where I didn't have enough cleaners and I'm struggling to find my cleaners to find jobs or um, I've had too many cleaners. And I always would rather have too many cleaners than um, I would always rather have too many cleaners than not enough. Right. Like I could work on getting more clients. Um, I could invest more to get more clients. I can talk them up. Right. So that way they won't leave anywhere while I'm trying to find more clients. Can we know a little more about that transit? So let me know that, that kind of answer that question. So I didn't even read the, the following sentence. I hope that kind of answered that. But yeah, that was kind of how I transitioned. Um, I hired Crystal. Me and Crystal was doing them together. Then I started slowly backing out and giving her more jobs.
So then it was just her and she was killing it. I hired a team. Um, the team was doing some, and then they was like, oh, I want separate jobs too. So they would do separate jobs, do big jobs together. Um, and then, yeah. And then, so like I was totally out and I was just managing the phones, you know, clients, cleaners, and just handling all of that day to day. And then, um, the two went out and then like, I went, I went real serious, like business mode. Like, okay, we about to like constantly always be hiring, like never stop. How many clients did you hire when you first let go? Boom. Yeah. Answer that. Um, and did you pay for ads in the beginning? Yes. So that was how I got clients. I didn't start with um, like Facebook groups or friends or family or anything like that. Um, I was new to Texas. So like I didn't feel like I had enough friends and family to really, you know, to call on like that. So I went straight to ads. I literally Googled. Um, how to find cleaning clients <laughs> and thumbtack popped up. And I know like that was an ad. So like, it wasn't like, oh, like this is the magic answer, but it was what popped up. So, um, so I, like I said, I didn't have any money at that time. So my very first client, like literally for the first two years, all my clients came from thumbtack. Okay. I made over $200,000 from Thumbtack alone. And I get it. A lot of people don't like Thumbtack. And I too have a love-hate relationship with Thumbtack. Trust. It's not like it, it was always like roses and paninis. Okay. Um, but I, I started with a very small budget of $25 and I would basically get jobs and then I would take the profit. So I would take half of that and I would put back in the marketing and then I would put the other half into, um, into my pocket, I guess. <laughs> I'll put the other part in my pocket. And then, I, so I just grew it. So I just did that every single time. I would take half of it, put it back and keep half, take half of it, put it back, keep half until, and I remember it was until I was able to like have a good solid $300 weekly budget. Um, and then like my goal was like, oh, I can't wait to I can get like a $500 weekly budget. And I was like a thousand. Oh my goodness. When I first hit a thousand dollar weekly budget, oh, it was amazing. Um, it was, it was amazing because of like the profits it brought, but I was more excited for like the growth. Cause I was like, I remember when I only had $25 and I had to borrow that from my mom to get thumbtack leads. But that was, um, that was how I got, and I never did it like with the, you know, flyers and I don't know if it works. Some people, I don't know if it works or not. I, I I don't I I don't know if it works. If anybody's ever done the flyer thing, like let me know if that's worked for you. But I've never done the flyer thing or like the cards or any of that. So I don't know if that works or not. <laughs> I looked into Thumbtack, but three hundred dollar a week is over my budget. And Angie's list is almost Angie's list is not good though. Went through it with it, but they have too many bad. Yeah, I do not like Angie. Angie list, which is now they're now called Angie's. Um, but that, that's okay. Like it's okay if you don't have a three hundred dollar budget. You heard me. I started with twenty five dollars. Okay. Um, you all you have to do is start where you where you're at. I didn't try to like go for the gusto because I didn't I didn't have no gusto. I didn't know who gusto was at that time. I literally just started with with what I had and where I was at. Right. Um, so start with what you have and it's okay. And you will build up, take the money that you, the profit that you now, make sure that you take your profits and put it <laughs> and put it back. But I just started with what I had and I just build it from there. So you will get to $300 a week. You will get to a thousand dollars a week. Okay. Um, I had, uh, when I finally got into SEO marketing, oh my goodness, that was $1,500 a month for SEO. And I willingly invested in that knowing that that was a long game, like knowing that I wasn't going to see a return from SEO from like months down the line. My husband was like, you are tripping. And then he was like, oh, we can add Google map pack. And I'm like, okay, cool. Let's add it. And it was like, my budget went up to like $1,700 a month, but it paid off. Right. And I had to work to that. So don't feel like, um, you have to like, have these big numbers in order to be successful in the beginning, right? I shared this story on the last time I, I think I was in Facebook group, though. Um, one of the students, right, 
similar story. And her first month in business, not having a good budget, she did $250, $250, okay? $250 she made. I'm so sorry. SEO is um, SEO. It stands for search engine optimization. <clears throat> and um, she made $250, okay? Second month, she made $350. Her third month, she made five k And every single month after that, she 10 x it. So where her sixth month in business, no experience, never met a client, never did any cleaning. She did 20K her sixth month in business, okay? But she had to grow from that. And I know you guys are asking, well, what the heck was the jump from 300 to 5K? The difference was her hiring. She had more people in place to do more cleanings and she increased her budget because I told her stop taking that 250 and pocketing it and actually put it back into the business, okay? Mm -hmm. So that was her, her jump. A lot of business owners where they're like, I'm plateaued. I'm not growing past 10 K. I'm like, well, what is your marketing budget? Like, what are you, what are you investing in? Right. Sometimes. Um, and it, I'm not to say this for everything or everybody's business because everybody's business is different, but sometimes it may take for you to bootstrap your business in the beginning and not take a profit. Right. Um, and that is you investing back into your business so that way it can and will eventually pay you. But if we're keeping everything and we're not investing back in our business, then it's not going to keep feeding us. It's not going to keep giving what we're giving it because we're not even giving it anymore. Like we need from it. It's like the, the giving tree. I read that book when I was a kid. <laughs> the giving tree, right? Like we take, 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 take. They're like, oh, I'm cold here. Take a jacket. Oh, I need a coat. I mean, I need a scooter or whatever, right? But it's like, we don't feed it back. We don't put it back. So once she started increasing her budget and not just taking the money and her, her mind was like, well, it's not even making anything. And I was like, well, then if it's not making anything, then put it all back, right? Put it all back and see what it can actually, could actually give you. And then you need to put people in place to actually take the bookings that you're getting. Um, but yeah. So, you know, it's, it's all a process. Don't feel forced to feel like you have to start that high. And for Thumbtack, I'm scared if I pay less, I won't get any leads as well. And I understand that as well. Right. But don't fear. Right. Like know the difference of if your fear is stopping you or not. If your fear, if you're allowing your fear to stop you from actually pursuing, then that's an unhealthy fear. OK. Can we have anxiety and be scared of the unknown and not sure what we're stepping in and getting into? Yes, we can. We're we're emotional. We're human. We, you know, I understand that. But if you're allowing fear to stop you, then that's unhealthy. That's dangerous. Like that's literally a roadblock block distraction. Okay, don't let it stop you. Um, you don't know what it's going to give you. Um, we have, and I don't I don't know where your business is located because different markets are different. We have a client and he's in Minnesota, I think. And like his 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 lead that he's getting from Thumbtack is like 12, 11, 10, 15 bucks. So it really just depends on the area and your market um, on what that budget will actually give you. You are welcome, M and M. <laughs> Awesome. Any other questions? I see some more has joined us. For those that are just joining us, you guys, I'm just doing a quick Q&A, um, answering some questions. I have like a late work night and I'm like working. Um, so I thought I'd just pop in and give you guys some questions or some, some answers for your questions. Um, and then also, if you guys saw the link above, I am hosting. For those that's like been around for, since the beginning, I used to do these all the time. And um, I'm going to do another one. I don't know if I want to continue it or not because trying to put this this one on has been so challenging. But um, I am hosting a, a challenge. Okay, you guys. So for those that have not yet got their business set up or you're not sure what the heck you're doing or you want a little guidance or maybe you have set your business up and you want to just check it and make sure that everything is straight. We are doing a challenge. Um, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to launch your guys' cleaning business from zero to start. Um, so I'm super excited about it. Like, it's going to be super dope. It's going to be three days because normally I would just do it one day. 
It's going to be a three-day event, 18th, 19th, and 20th. Um, y'all going to get me and I'm going to be like going over all the things of all the things. Okay. So like you do not want to miss out. And also uh, it's currently free. Like it's currently like right now at this moment. Um, <laughs> the course is 97. Oh, let me say this too. The course is, is 97, right? A $97 membership for you to get access to everything. Um, because we have grown so much in this time. Um, we don't have just only like the residential cleaning course, but we have like commercial, mm -hmm. Airbnb, student turnover, government contract, movie theaters, not, not movie theaters, movie contracts, like cleaning out movie sets and like film studios, mm -hmm. um, post-construction and so much more mm -hmm. in there. So I've actually turned it into like a continual mm -hmm. membership where you pay $97 a month and you get access to everything. But, um, with the challenge, if you sign up for the challenge and do an upgrade, your first month will only be $47. So that's an option too. So if you're wanting to join the, the course, it's a perfect time because your first month will only be $47. But um, but yeah, so right now the challenge is free. So you guys can actually sign up. Okay. You can sign up and get free access to the challenge um, because we're not putting a price on it until the 11th shoot that went by fast the 11th is tomorrow golly july is half almost halfway over <laughs> okay so we're not so so if you guys really want to be in this challenge you guys i just dropped the link again okay please sign up it's going to be free for right now i don't want you guys to miss out um i really want as many people to be there because i'm super excited about this challenge because i've been working on the workbook like you're going to get a lot of things on this challenge um, because I really want to break it down. The, the conference was amazing. If for those anybody that attended the conference, it was super dope. So much great information, like strategies dropped right. But a lot of people were asking, like, well, now what do I do with it? Like, they gave me the information, but like, how now? Now what do I do? So that's where I'm coming, and I'm going to talk about the steps of actually implementing to actually get it set up right. Um, not just like surface level of you do, do this and this is cool and this is amazing. Like, no, we're going to do one plus one equals two and we're going to put it together. Okay. Um, do you have clients in Canada? What's view about the Canadian market? So I personally don't like have any like clients in Canada. So, and like when I, like my viewpoints is like our VA clients. I also have a VA company where we service cleaning uh we just do residential cleaning businesses right so i get i get a lot of insight with looking in on their companies and like their day-to-day -day and watching their numbers and stuff and you know giving feedback and tips and things um so never a canadian company but we do have like canadian students in the co clean academy um so i think we've had personally that i know of that i've like had a chance to chat with um, like maybe four or five. Um, and they say it's really well. One actually sold his company um, a couple months ago. Like he's built, he built it up and was able to sell it, which is awesome. That was always his intention, especially the way he branded it. Um, but he actually sold it, which was super awesome. So from what I know of, it's, it's really good. And then I also have a, a, a cleaning business mm -hmm. friend that's also companies in Canada. And um, her business is doing amazing. She's she's a seven figure business owner. So yeah. What is a typical course length? So, um, I don't man. That's a really good question. Somebody else has asked me that question before as well, and I don't know to be honest. Um, it's a it's a self pace. So you go as as time allows you to go. Right. We meet every Tuesday for live Q&A, very similar to this. I do a lot of share screen sharing and example and like, um, not examining, <laughs> wrong word, uh, where like I will look over your website and like your guys set up and things like that. Um, but it's, it's, it's totally self-paced. Um, but there's so many, there's so much resources in there. I wish I could do a share screen on this thing. I don't know how to do that. But um, there's so much resources because my goal is to be able to like provide resources to all the questions asked. 
right? I get a lot of questions and a lot of them are the same questions. Um, and that's totally fine because it allows me to know where people are at in their journey. Like when I very started this, this, the live in the very beginning, I wanted to ask like, where are you guys currently at? Do we have new people just started? You know, I'm stuck at 5K, I'm stuck at 10K. Um, how do I scale it, right? Knowing where you're at kind of lets me know like what questions you're already gonna have. So in the academy, I have like this master FAQ that literally answers like have pre-answered questions for like the questions that I get all the time. And then when I do get a new question, I'll pop it in there and I will provide an answer or resource um, or guidance to that specific question. So there's so much resources in there that goes along with the course. That's, I think that's why it's really hard for me to be like, what is a typical length of the course? And then of our additional courses of like the Airbnb cleaning and government contract, um, I partner with individuals that have mastered these areas in cleaning. Like I'm the queen of residential. I only... Uh, <laughs> I only like, like will own that space. I'll never like be like, oh yeah, I know all the things. Cause baby, I do not know any of the things, but residential, but I master with so many great people that have, um, that are, are amazing in those spaces. So they come and they partner with the CEO clean Academy and then they will teach us on those areas. So like we have our commercial partner, Kendall, and he comes, um, almost every other month or once a quarter, depending on his schedule. And he'll come teach mm -hmm. in the academy on commercial cleaning and post-construction and, mm -hmm. and bidding and quoting and all of that stuff. And then we have mm -hmm. Mila that comes and teaches us on Airbnb cleaning. Mm -hmm. um, tomorrow, she teaches us on government mm -hmm. contracts and student turnover. And if you guys don't know a student turnover, oh my goodness, like that is, there's so much, first of all, you guys, the cleaning business like it is an 82 million dollar like industry okay and as much as i love residential it doesn't all just lie in residential it's so many different areas within the cleaning that you can tap into or that you can grow and scale and add different sectors to your cleaning business okay um tamara helped like two of our students no not two i want to say three of our students secure um, a six-figure contract for a student turnover. And if you guys don't know what student turnover is, it's it's when colleges partner with um, apartment complexes, right? And they will have so many units at a, an apartment complex for student, for student housing mm -hmm. for colleges, right? So like, you know, a big one could be like 500 units, 1,200 units, you know, 300 units, 100 units. And when the students leave and return, those units need to be cleaned. And then not only do they need to be clean, they need the carpets need to be clean. The paint needs to be freshened up. Um, I think that's it. Paint, carpet, and cleaning, right? So paint, carpet, and cleaning has to be done in those units, okay? Um, so they need to hire cleaning companies to go clean that. So they will go and clean 1,200 units, 300 units, and it's only done in that particular time frame. But you partner, just like how I teach, right? You partner with other providers to go provide this cleaning service. Mm -hmm. And the cleaning is done. Like you'd be like, how in the heck can you clean 1,200 units? Um, these are small units, of course, right? Mm -hmm. I think of an apartment size, but uh, within a couple of days, because they clean 24 hours, like literally you'll have crews that come in the morning, mm -hmm. evening, afternoon, morning, uh, like midnight, right? Mm -hmm. They clean around the clock. But uh, we had like two students secure uh, 100, mm -hmm. uh, 100K contracts each, like each of them, mm -hmm. right? And I think one of them got two contracts, which is super dope. So mm -hmm. it's a really cool, like, thing. I, I thought to get into it, but I'm like, I don't know if I, if I have any <laughs> bandwidth for that extraness, but it's super dope. I'm happy for my, my, I'm happy for the students. I'm super excited for them. Um, and anybody that decides to get into that. So, but yeah, so those courses, um, they're about two hours and, but there's like a couple different trainings in there. And then we're like, what live Q and A things like that. I'm sorry. I took a super simple question and made a really long answer. <laughs> Uh, all right. Any other, any other cleaning question, cleaning business questions on tonight? 
<clears throat> oh, goodness, my throat. Where's my water? Any other questions before we wrap it up? I say it's already 9.15. Goodness, the time be going by so fast. Has everybody enrolled in the challenge? That's what I want to know. Everybody that's currently on the live, let me know, you guys, if you have already enrolled in the challenge. Please drop it in. And I hope you guys all have enrolled in the challenge and be there. How do you decide on the area? Oh, that's a good question. I'm going to come back to that one because that's, that's a really, that's a super important question. Um, and I have like this whole like strategy around it. That's a super good question. I'm going to be going in over that question really in detail on the challenge too, because that totally matters. Um, Eminem, I'm going to post the link. I just posted the link. Click the link that is right under you. And you can enroll in the challenge. Like I said, right now, everybody can enroll in the challenge for free. Um, the price doesn't get added to it. And when it does, it's a small, it's only like 20 something dollars. Okay. So it's nothing like super, <laughs> super big. Um, but as of right now, you guys can get in free. So for everybody that's watching you guys, please enroll in the challenge. And when you do, let me know, drop it in the chat and let me know when you've enrolled. Um, let's see how, no, would you come down on your price to a potential bi-weekly? If so, how much? Goodness, I was thinking of doing a YouTube channel on this because I got to write this down. I was thinking because I've had this question asked to me three times today and I was like, I need to do a YouTube on this. Let me write. Oh, let's see. Um, Because it's like, it's like it, the question was on this and also if cleaners ask for more money, like after you give them a job. Like, let me see, price. I'm sorry, I gotta write this down because I'm gonna forget because this question has been popping up so many times. I'm going to be on me. Oh, that's okay, Lisa. I, that's okay, Lisa. I'll let you know when we have another one. Um, I might, I really would like to have more, but like I said, this one just, this planning, this one just took a lot. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I could do this again. Um, so, my it, it it depends, okay? Because when I'm when I'm booking clients, I I do have a threshold of like what percentage I will off I will give them. Like I already have it in my mind. Like I'm going no less than this, right? The only thing is that with the biweekly, I already have discounts in place. So if you're asking this on top of a normal discount, then that's when it it, it depends, right? Um, it depends on like the size of the home, like what the actual price actually is. So like my reoccurring price uh, discounts is um, monthly is 10, biweekly is 15, weekly is 20% off. So I'm already giving them a good deal. Now if they want more than that, like it really depends on like it, it'd have to be a job really high because um, remember, I don't know if you were here in the beginning, but I pride myself on paying my cleaners, right? Like that's how I show that I respect them. That's how they are more loyal and dependable and, and provide a great work. So that's always a thing I think about. I don't, I don't really never, uh, I take that back. It's like 75 to 25%, 25% caring about wanting to keep the client happy. So I will lower my price and have that threshold. But it's more so on with my cleaners. Like, is my cleaners, is my cleaners going to um, clean for this price? Are they going to have any negative feedback on this price? Right. I think that's what I think about more with having to lower my prices. I think about my cleaners because if I offer them to clean a big house reoccurring or not and the price is low like i don't want them not to do a good work but oh my gosh this i'm only getting paid so much for this like i ain't i ain't about to even do all the things right like i don't want them to have that mindset so because i'm already giving them a discount already on top of for the reoccurring it really depends on the total price if i'm going to give them anything extra and if i am it may be only be like I don't even want to say 5% because that's 25%. That's, you know, yeah. So maybe not, but like I said, it depends on, that's what I was thinking too. Okay. Awesome. I'm glad I answered your question because I want to start rambling. Um, how do you decide on it? No, no, no. Amazing can help me. Yes. 
please, Mike, sign up for the challenge. That's, that is the purpose, is to help you launch your cleaning business uh, from zero to start, okay? So please, please, it's going to be super dope. You guys, it'll be a three-day, um, and I have, like, extra Q&A, and there's, like, bonuses and surprises. Like, yeah, it's going to be super awesome. Um how do you decide your area? So my cute, my couple of things to deciding like the market where I want to put my company, and this helps determine like the whole precedent of your company, as in how many, uh, what what can I charge? Uh, um, who am I who am I marketing to? Like where am I going to market to? How's my branding going to look? What is my logo going to look like? So. I like to place my companies in suburbs. Like that's my favorite thing. I tried uptown. I tried downtown and I just something about them suburbs. Okay. I just love the suburbs because that is where I find um, my clients most are mostly at. Right. Um, so my clients consist of like that busy professional household where either the mom is a stay at home mom, uh, but she's not really like that typical stay at home mom. She's like, Drop the kids off. I'm going to mimosas. I'm going to pick y'all up, okay? And I want the house to be clean when I get back home, right? With dinner served. Um, and the other one is like the two family, like husband and wife. They're both busy professionals where they're both working. Um, you just don't have time to clean. The kids is involved in all the things and they're picking them up and they're just running around crazy and they're trying to figure out life and they make good money, but like, I just don't have time to clean, okay? Okay. So those are like my two avatars. Those are like what my people look like. Okay. Income wise, I, I'm looking for an income level of no less than 100, 100K with one person working, 150 to 175 with both working. And you guys can find these numbers out because like, well, Jazz, how the heck do you know what they're making? Um, I just look on neighborhood groups. Like I will actually take the suburb or the city that I'm searching up and Googling and I'll actually search the company, like search the area up as if like you're trying to buy a house and you'll see that you can see what the income levels is per neighborhood, per area. Um, and then also house prices. Cause that's lets me know. Um, so houses no less than 300 K 400 K. Um, and the, my best tells of the area. So I know like where to market is schools. Um, because good school districts and good schools, they're funded by tax dollars, which is funded by property taxes and to have good money coming in the tax, you know what I mean? Like putting all of that together. So that's how I really determine my areas. Also, I look for growth. I look to see what's coming. So y'all know that I'm in Texas, right? There's, um, a, a miniature size. Disney World Universal Studio situation that's being built in the suburbs of Frisco, Texas, right? They're currently building it. It's going to be ready in a couple years. What like what is that going to bring? That's going to bring so much business, right? Um in South Texas or South South of Dallas, they're planning to build um a mini version of what is that? Um like, you know, like where they film movies at in LA, like that. They're planning to build a big studio place like that down there, right? So what's that going to bring? That's going to be bring growth, like executives and business owners and families and people are going to be moving, right? Or temporary stay, Airbnb stay. So I look for those as well to like determine like the growth of an area, how many houses, subdevelopments are being built, right? You can, you can find all of this in your news and your business journal, like all of those things. Like I look at all of those things to determine where I want to plant a company. Am I supposed to turn on my notifications on Facebook for the challenge? Because I didn't know about the conference that happened. I totally missed it. Oh, yes. No, please, please, please turn on your notifications. But also the challenge is going to take place in a separate challenge group. So when you sign up for the challenge with the link, it'll It'll like you'll get to this page where it'll have all the links and information so that way you can um, get access to the group. OK, so it's going to be taking place in a separate group, but I'm talking about it in that group as well. But definitely sign up for the link. And then, Lisa, if you sign up for the challenge, there will be replays um, if you decide to, to join VIP. OK, what's the benefits of having a few employees along with subcontracting? Mm. 
So I'm not heavy on the employee, right? There's some people that's like, they're either super strong, like employee, 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 like I'm, I love employees and they're super strong on subcontracting. Um, I feel like for me, the only benefit that I thought about of even having an employee or like converting to employee is because I wanted more control. I wanted more control on what products they use, um, when they can be there, like being on time. I wanted to give consequences if they are not on time. Basically, I want to be like a mom, right? Um, on consequences if they're, if they're late, um, I can have them wear a uniform. Um, I can have them like actually all clean and uniformity. Like, hey, everybody do this and greet this when you walk in. Do this and greet when you walk out. Start here and here. Leave a mint on the pillow, right? It's only because I wanted to actually <coughs> do that because with independent contractors, you can't, right? Legally, you can't tell them what to do, when to do, they're being to be there, all those things. So that was the only thing. Until I realized that an employee or a contractor, like whether they wanted to be late or not, <laughs> whether they're going to do what I want to do or not, they're going to do what they wanted to do, right? Like I need to make sure that I'm hiring the right person overall, whether they're an employee or a contractor, um, because they're going to do what they want to do anyways. I, I, I don't have it. We've, we've seen places or worked in places where somebody was an employee and they were still a bad employee. Right. Um, so, yeah. So that's my thing. That's like that's totally my my opinion on it. Hey, I'm in High Point, North Carolina. Oh, my goodness. Do I know that? Have I have you told me that before? Because I uh, used to live in Greensboro. High Point is like down the street. <laughs> um. I live in High Point, North Carolina, but I think having a cleaning business in Charlotte, yes, would turn out better because it's busier. Yes, yes, you're definitely right about that. There are, uh, but I don't know if operating a business from this far. No. So I'm going to give you some insight because I have seen Charlotte's business areas and you are 1,000 times 1,000% correct. Um, that is definitely a great market. They have low price points but they have the volume, like serious, crazy volume. So that is a good area. Um, and it's not a bad idea whatsoever. Now, um, shoot, what's that area that I'm thinking of? Oh, I just said it inside my head when I was talking, when I said, saw a high point. Um, gosh, man, I can't. Erica, send me a DM when we're done. So I can think of this area um, because there is a good area. Um, there is a good area closer to you as well, too, though. Um, and then uh, what's that other area? See, I, I haven't lived in Greensboro about five years, and now I'm like drawing a blank. Even though, yeah, send me a DM so that way I can tell you these areas that I think also could be good. That's closer to you. Um, but yeah, Charlotte is a great area. Um, and I, I still think you could get business too out there where you're at. Um, what's that what's that area with the college? It is not it's not too far from Greensboro. I used to work in there. What's that? I think it starts with a W. Facebook. I don't I'm not really never on Instagram. Okay. All right, you guys. Oh, is it? Yes. Hyena. Yep. Jamestown and Winston-Salem. Yep, yep, yep. Exactly. I was, it was, I was, I said it in my head literally as soon as I saw you said High Point and Jamestown would be a great area. Okay. And now you can kind of see like, right, like you go into Jamestown, you can, you already know that it's money, right? Um, so Jamestown would be a good area and then Winston-Salem would be a good area too. And you can probably do really good with, uh, student turnover out there as well because of all the colleges. You have Bennett, you have Winston-Salem, you have AT&T AT or AT, Atlanta, AT, not Atlanta. I don't know what it is. It's like some 18 something, but yeah. You would do really good with uh, student turnover over there as well. 
Awesome. You are welcome. Okay. Any last minute questions? I'm going to take one more question and then we'll wrap it up because it's almost 930. Um, and your girl is hungry. <laughs> and those for that's joining on, I see number. That's what, this is the part I hate. It's like every time I get ready to like get off, I see more people's joining on and I want to be able to answer everybody's questions. <laughs> but I know that I can't. So I'm going to take one more question. And then for everybody that is on, you guys, I already see some people said that they already signed up for the challenge. I'm going to drop the link again, you guys. Everybody, please, please sign up for the channel. Like, do not wait. Sign up right now, okay? That way you're already enrolled. You're already locked in for free. So you don't have to worry about when the price goes on on the 12th. I say the 11th. On the 11th when... Um, when the price goes on. And if you did miss it, you got busy, you got occupied. I'm totally that person. I plan to do something. I get super distracted and I forget. Um, so it is only 20, it's only going to be $27, but, um, I do want you guys to take advantage of it and get it for free, like right now. Okay. So click the link. Hey, AB, click the link, get enrolled in the challenge. It's going to be super dope. Thank you. Awesome. So you go eat, girl. I am. My husband just cooked. He's texting me. He's like, are you done yet? I'm like, he just got back from soccer. So, you know, it was his turn to take the kids to soccer this evening. And I'm like, you know, every time, every time he want to take the kids to soccer, he act like he's super mom. Like, I done took the kids to soccer. I done cook. Are you going to come eat? And I want to be like, you know, I've been doing that for a very long time, sir. Okay. Like, Chill out. Now you kind of understand what it feels like to do all the things, take the kids to soccer, and then be like, you don't come eat this food I just spent my time cooking, okay? But you know, right? Erica, like, how dare you? <laughs> because you know how it feels for, you know, one day out the week. <laughs> I opened my business company and just looking for contracts, looking for you. Nice. Awesome. Are you doing commercial or residential? Commercial. Awesome. So I, your girl loves uh, residential. I'm super excited that you joined the challenge. Just come anyways, because it's going to be super dope. You can never have too much knowledge. Now, if you're interested in commercial, I would definitely recommend you checking out Kindle. Um, it's, I think he just dropped something called the Clean Money. Um, he's super dope. He's our commercial cleaner. Uh, partner and he teaches all us all things commercial right but if, if you are like super like gung-ho for commercial um as much as i would love for you to be all things residential and join the co clean academy um, i want what's best for you as well so check him out um and then that way he could he could definitely help you oh toronto awesome there was somebody else, I think, on here from Canada. We have a, I have a lot of Canada students, which is super awesome because I love when I get a chance to talk to you guys because I love your guys' accent. <laughs> Y'all probably feel like you don't have an accent, but like I could totally hear it. Oh, yes. My dog is sleeping. My dog is always sleeping. Somebody left a really nasty comment on a video about my dog snoring in the background and they was like, get that dog out of here. And I was like, you don't live here. Like <laughs> y'all don't live here. But, um, yes, I have an English bulldog and she's, um, like my shadow. So she's like literally sleep right here by my foot. It's like that song. When I move, you move just like that. That's, that's what, she, that's what we do. Okay. <laughs> uh. My dog, yeah, she's always sleeping. You would think that, like, she got a nine to five. And it's funny because I didn't even really know that you guys could really hear her snoring. Um, so, yeah, and like my newest videos, I have had to have her out. And it's, I feel so bad because she just sleeps outside the door of my office. She'll just sleep there and just stay there until I open the door. Yes, please check them out. I am too, especially now that I know like you're in my old living state. I don't want to say home state, but 
I really did love living out there. It was so peaceful. And I didn't appreciate it until like after I left and like I moved to Dallas and Dallas is super busy. Now I'm like trying to move out in the country and move further and further out. I need like 50 acres. Like that's my goal. <sighs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. I always hate this, like if there's even more people, but I figured that you guys don't have any questions, okay? But if you do, if you do have any questions, I'm gonna let you know, come to the challenge, ask your guys questions, and then also feel free to drop them in here and I'll come back and swing back around and drop them. Um, I told a couple other people that I'm gonna, I'll try to come back because um, somebody was like, I can't stay. So I told them I'm gonna try to come back and do another Q and A on YouTube because I haven't been on YouTube in a minute. But the only thing that I had to just be during the daytime, so it'll probably be like Wednesday dayish time. So I will be back and I'll pop back in here. Um, how's the real estate? It's coming. I'm working on it. I'm I'm searching for my land. <laughs> I'm searching for it. I got my builder. I just need my land. And uh, I told my husband like. He said, my acre count keeps going up. And I was like, but you want some cows? Like, you know what? That's not a bad idea. I'm like, get some cows and some chickens. Y'all see these egg prices going up? I'm going to have my own eggs. So I'm going to go to the grocery store and buy these expensive eggs. <laughs> but no, it's coming along good. It's just taking much longer than I, I anticipated, which most things tend to do. But, you know, I'm going to patiently wait. And work it out and just pray that, you know, my perfect land is going to be just waiting perfectly for me because I have so many, like, like requirements. <laughs> I don't want to be too inland. I don't want no pond. I don't want no tree line. I don't want no, like, electrical line going through it. And they're like, girl, you done crossed out, like, half the lots available. So, you know, I'm picky. But I love you guys. I hope you guys have a good evening. I will see you guys an, on another day. I'm thinking Wednesday I'll pop back up in here. And like I said, you guys, I'm going to drop the link again. You guys get into this challenge. I promise you, you're not going to, you're going to be upset if you miss this challenge. Um, Eric was already like, yo, I was upset that I missed the conference. Okay. And it was due to like notification. So I don't want you guys to miss out on this challenge. Okay. I haven't done one in six months. I'm coming back. And I'm doing this challenge. It's going to be three days. It's going to be super amazing. And um, yeah, I'm just I'm just ready to like help as many people get this business launched because I don't want to see all these shoulda, coulda, woulda. You guys, look, we're almost over halfway over the month. Like, well, I mean, the year, like, and the month. But like, time is weights on no man. Okay, so this challenge is literally meant to do exactly that to challenge everybody that thinks wants could start a cleaning business. This is to let you know there's no excuses that I'm going to show you the things and then you're going to do the thing and you're going to have your cleaning business launch. Okay. And then six months from now, when you're like, yo, Jazz, I hate that I waited, but I'm so glad I attended the challenge because my business just did X, Y, and Z. I'm going to be just so excited for you. I'm going to be as excited as if I was my own. Like when I hear good news and people tell me all the things that they're doing with their business, I just like, I'd be excited as if it was my own business because I just understand the work you guys put into it. And it's just like watching your little baby birds just grow and fly away. <laughs> all right, you guys, that's enough. I'm super tired. Y'all see that I'm like, I'm talking about birds. Okay. So I'll talk to you guys later. You guys get the link. Join the challenge. I will see you guys later. Good night, y'all.